Good morning, folks. We're starting with the SDO satellite, the 304 angstrom detector revealing ionized helium within a solar eruption, one of the many cameras that detects something other than hydrogen. Top stories today begin with Antarctica. Surface ice sets record high marks. The underside melting in the western half is breaking its own records. But looking at the Ross Sea, after a 2 to 5 percent reduction in ice from 1950 to 1993, we have increased 5 percent in just the last 20 years. I also recommend checking out the article on Titan as a stand-in for exoplanets in an attempt to calibrate our efforts at analyzing other worlds while the sunlight pierces the thickest portion of its atmosphere from our perspective. On the RSOE alert map, looking at the radiation leak in New Jersey, without really much more information, we got the assurance hitting the wire that the company responsible is saying it's a false reading, I'm sure. So this was Hurricane Amanda at her strongest. Earth spots watchers check the penumbral correlate in earthly storms. She reached category 4 two days ago but is weakened as she heads north. She will affect the coastline but likely as a tropical depression. We noticed two convergence lines relevant for South American observers today. Could have some severe events. Another line appears set to crest South Africa while the eastern flood zones see no relief today. Jumping north to Europe where the precipitable water overlay shows a line from the UK to the far east and another pushing in from the Atlantic. The two convergences swinging up from Antarctic lows are the big story here. Got some equatorial moisture at the northern coastlines but the storms will remain south. Moisture content looks almost no different here from yesterday. The moisture and heat driving north into the US is causing some very random storm events across a wide area and even outside of the official storm zones. Solar wind showing some elevated density followed by a speed rise this morning, likely a minor coronal hole stream that won't cause major instability, but anytime we take an interplanetary shock, whether from a CME or coronal hole, the sensitive meters in flux show that energetic impact. Solar flaring, yet another day without anything significant. The sunspots are incapable of large flaring as is, with none better than a simple beta magnetic class. Earth's magnetic connection to the sun jumps to the equator, still at the limb. After throwing a conniption the last week, the coronal magnetic field settled down and opened up half our star to the solar system. We've now got the Earth-facing coronal hole slice back on the power charts, but showing moderate to below average force only. Not enough to bring us much higher on the condition index, but if space weather ramps anymore, we will finally climb up out of sea range on the earthquake conditions. Lastly, folks, you know the drill. Every morning the news shows up here on YouTube, and often I upload a second video or two later in the afternoon or evening. But yesterday evening we uploaded seven videos, the first seven of the Sun series. There will be much more to come, including some supplemental resources made available this summer. Short learning segments is my favorite way to go. Check them out. Current conditions and shots of our start to close. Eyes open. No fear at 6.30 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.